to Ramadan in Focus. I'm Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes, we want to talk about a focus. A focus on what is Ramadan, what comes with Ramadan, and how we can better utilize our lives by knowing about this subject, Ramadan. Along the way, I'm going to be talking about things from the Quran. Actually, I'll be talking about the Quran, even the word Quran itself, what it means, what it is, and how we understand it in today's world. Also, I'll be talking about some of the other words in the Arabic language. Words like taqwa, salah. Fasting is Ramadan, or psalm actually, and months of the year. Many things we'll be discussing in our program, but the focus... The focus is on the focus of what Ramadan really is, what it means, what it implies, how I can use it today. Now let's take, for instance, you wake up one morning and somebody's telling you, hey, tomorrow might be Ramadan. Oh, really? Yeah, we've got to look for the moon tonight. So you get some friends together. You want to go out in the woods or out on a mountaintop somewhere you can see. I guess you wouldn't want to be in the woods. You get to trees in a way. But you want to get out in, in the desert areas, someplace where it's clear. You can look up. A beach, by the way, is a good place to do that if you don't have any desert around because it's clear. You look up at the sky. Okay, what am I looking for? Well, if you're looking at stars, it's already too late because the thing you're looking for is the crescent moon. And this crescent moon only shows up for just a few minutes, just a few, few minutes. And depending where you are on the earth, which direction it will actually be. But when you see it, it'll be just about the time of sunset. And it'll look very similar to what it looks like when you're trimming your thumbnail. Have you ever used the clippers on your thumbnail and you get that little piece that comes off of there? It looks very much like a sliver of a thumbnail or something up in the sky. And it's not straight up usually, at least not from when I've seen it. It's always been toward the horizon line. And that's what you're looking for. You're saying, okay, I got it. There it is. And if you should just be fortunate enough to see it, you'll say, oh, wow, I saw it. There, there it is. Now, you have to have other people, too, to be witnesses if you're going to be, you know, officially a witness for this. And then it's turned into the center, the Islamic center, and then from there they take calculation to find out how many people actually saw it and verify it. Because it isn't sufficient that just one person saw it. In, in, in today's world, they like to have a number of people verify that. So, okay, now we saw it, but what do we do next? Whether you saw it or not, if the Islamic centers have said that, okay, we're fasting, it begins right then. As the sun went down, that's when Ramadan starts. Now, some people are going to say, really? I thought you guys fast in the daytime. That's true. We do fast in the daytime, but Ramadan started at night. Because on the lunar calendar, everything goes by the position of the moon to know what day of the month it is. But, but the day itself is gauged off the sun. So when the sun is gone, that starts the day, all right? When it comes up, that's the middle of the day. <laughs> and when it sets the next night, that's the end of the day. So if you said high noon in uh, America, we say high noon, especially I'm from Texas, we use that expression. You mean the sun is straight up. But if you said exactly noon or middle of the day, You'd be confused on a lunar calendar because that'd be actually when the sun is starting to rise. <laughs> but we put all that aside. You're a Muslim, you're fasting now, but it, you don't start the fasting from the food and the drink yet, but you do start the fasting that's implied with psalm. What do I mean by that? Let's put that in focus. If the month just started when the sun went down, but I can still eat and drink, how does that work? Well, one of the things you're going to do, you're going to go to the masjid because they're going to start reciting the Quran. During the month of Ramadan, it is preferred for each masjid to have someone who will come and recite from the Quran. And usually they try to recite the entire Quran, dividing it up over a period of 30 days. And they recite a portion of the Quran called a juza or one thirtieth of the Quran. And that fits because in 30 days, 30 parts, ta-da, you got the whole Quran. In fact, some 
will actually try to accelerate it a little bit so that they'll be finished by the 27th night or what's called Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. But this is not the object of what I'm putting in focus right now. It's the idea of how do I experience that first day. So, okay, we went out, we looked for the moon. Most likely we didn't see it, but somebody did. They're telling us we're going to start fasting. And right then and there you begin. Fasting from what though? Because Psalm also means to stay away from, abstain from other things too. Very important for Muslims is to always speak the truth. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuladina amanu ataqala wa kulu kaulin sadida. This tells us that, oh believers, you better have taqwa for Allah. Well, now we know taqwa is to have a shield against Allah's punishment. But what does this mean, kulu kaulin sadida? It means you got to watch every word you say. It means every word coming out of your mouth, it better be the truth. In fact, do you know what the Prophet Muhammad said about this? Not just the whether or not it's the truth, but anything in general. If it's not good that you're going to say it, be quiet. Even if it's true, but it's not good, don't say it. Man kana yukmanu wa yasmut. More or less the Arabic. <laughs> and in English, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us, let the one who believes in Allah in the last day either say what is good, khayr, Obviously, the truth is good. Say good or be silent. So as the sun is going down, that starts the first night of Ramadan. So that last night of Shaban, the sun goes down. Immediately, it starts the next day of Ramadan. And through those next days, I'm going to be careful of a lot of things in addition to not eating or drinking during the day or having marital relations during the day, I'm also going to be very careful and maybe hopefully continue this practice even after Ramadan is over. When Ramadan's over, you eat, you drink, you have your relationship with your wife, etc. Not a problem. But this thing that you're staying away from, you want to continue staying away from it, which is lying, saying bad things, backbiting, slandering, all of the things that coming out of your mouth that shouldn't come out. It's very important that while I go through this month of Ramadan to focus on that. One of the expressions that we learn too in Islam is saying, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. What is that about? If somebody comes to you and he's arguing with you, and you start arguing back, and he's arguing back. You start to get inflamed. You're becoming hot. You're getting excited. You know, what are you doing? This? Blah, blah, blah. Wait a minute. Stop. Say, on the song, I'm fasting. I'm fasting. Because you don't want to lose your fasting. You don't want to lose a portion of it, a part of it, or any of it, or all of it because of Lying, we mentioned that. Backbiting, we mentioned that. Eating, drinking, or having marital relations, but also this one, arguing. You say, wait a minute. You mean I could lose my fasting for arguing? Yes, because you mustn't get angry. Keep it cool. Take it easy. Don't blow it. Now, how am I going to keep that under control? Well, fasting is supposed to help you keep from getting into that problem. Because while you're fasting, you feel your stomach squeezing a little bit. You feel a little bit dry in your throat. You're feeling like, <clears throat> I'm fasting. You know you're fasting. Now if somebody want to argue with you, you'll say, no, 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 I'm fasting, I'm fasting. You don't need to get angry. You don't need to get this violence running through your body. Take it easy. Because if you can learn to control this, look, what, look at the benefits. If you can control what's coming out of your mouth, control this lying and backbiting and slander and the bad things to start arguments with, look what could be a benefit for you. Keep doing that. Even when the fasting month is over, you become a lot nicer guy to be around. Oh, yeah. People don't really appreciate somebody who is hot-tempered and violent, screaming, hollering, lying, 
slandering, backbiting, talking about other people behind their back. People really don't like that. It does not make you popular. In fact, it makes you very unpopular because people think and they say, you know, if he says all this stuff and I'm sitting uh, there in front of him, he's telling me all these things about other people. <coughs> what will he say about me when I'm not sitting here? What will, <laughs> where will I be? You know, this guy's saying this about this guy, this guy, that guy. If I'm not there, he's going to say about me too. So you will not be a popular individual amongst the people if you're a backbiter, a slanderer, a liar. Nobody likes liars. And also if you like to be argumentative. Somebody wants to come up with an argument. Well, I think that, you know, this political person, the president of so-and-so, he should do it. Oh, no, he should. Yes, he, no, blah, blah, blah. Or this particular sports event that came out like that. Oh, the referee is like, no, he was. Yes, he is. No, he's not. They shouldn't win. They should. Uh. These things, when you're having a discussion, are fine. But when it turns into an argument, it's time to sit down and cool down. Literally. In Islam, we know that. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us, if you are feeling anger, and you know when you feel anger, if you're standing up, sit down. And another thing he told us, to make wudu, which is when you put the water on you for your arms and your face and head, everything like that. When you wash up like that, that water cools you down. You're like, ah. Another thing you can do is pray two rakah, rakatain. Because when you wash up and then you pray two rakah, when you get all done, you're in a different mood. You stood up bowed over and even prostrated the blood coming to your brain and you start feeling different when you get up you don't feel like this same argumentative individual that you were a minute ago so what this does it helps us to understand how to keep it in focus by controlling ourselves more than just staying away from food drink and marital relations well that's it for this episode of ramadan in focus till next time peace assalamu alaikum oh.